Hi, my name is Linus and today I show you how to play Scoventure. Scorventur is a cooperative game for one to four players and takes place in this forest. The devil, also known as Gamli Erik, has come to earth together with his six minions. You, the players, must help the badger Vokter and his allies to defeat all the six minions before Gamli Erik catches him. The tree cards are double-sided. They are either healthy or withered. Place six tree cards in a circle showing their green, healthy side. Place the Gamli Eric pawn on any tree of your choice and the Vokter pawn three trees away in clockwise direction. Place the four Vokter cards, Vokter's Command, Vokter's Call, Vokter's Gambit, and Vokter's Wrath on the table. These are action overview cards and will stay there for the rest of the game. Place the six minion cards on the table in any order you like. Take the 25 ally cards, five of each, Elefolk, Huldre, Nisse, Troll, Formsgifter, together with the 13 adversary cards showing Gamli Erik, and shuffle them together as a deck and place it on the table. Draw three cards from the deck and place them in a row beside the deck. This is called the future. If you draw any Gamli Eric card, set it aside and draw until no Gamli Eric card is in the future. Then each player draws one card to their hand. And again, if it is a Gamli Eric card, set it aside and draw until you don't have a Gamli Eric card. Then take all set aside Gamli Eric cards and shuffle them back into the deck. The player's hands are open in formation so you can always share information about which cards you have in your hand. Place these components back into the box. You now need them for your first game. That's two tree cards, Vokter's Rescue, Vokter's Conciliation, six Lick Demand cards and all the tokens. The player who was most recently hunted by a monster in a forest is the starting player. If there is no such player, then just choose one. You win the game together as soon as you manage to defeat all six of Gamli Eric's minions. You lose the game as soon as Gamli Eric and Vokter are on the same tree card. Players take turns in clockwise order and on your turn you must take one of the five actions listed on the Vokter cards here. And then, if you have more than five cards in your hand, you must discard cards until you have five cards in your hand. This is the discard pile. Then, if there are less than three cards in the future, let's say like this, move all cards to the left and fill the gaps with new cards from the deck. And then it's the next player's turn to take an action, check their hand size and refill the future again. This continues until you either lose or win the game. When you choose the action Vokter's Command Position, you must play one of your ally cards from your hand into the forest. If there is no ally, the first ally needs to be placed on the card where Vokter is on like this. If there is already an ally in the forest, the next ally must be placed on a tree adjacent to a tree with an ally 
and it must be of the same kind. You cannot place a different ally in the forest than the ones that are already there. Place allies in the same orientation as the tree to show that they are hidden. You only can place allies from your hand, never from the future or discard pile, and there can only be ever one ally on each tree. You can also place an ally on the tree with Gamli Eric. When you take the action Vogtor's Call, you must take one card from the future into your hand. If the leftmost card in the future is a Gandhi Eric card, you must take this card. If it's not, if it's anywhere else or if there's no Gandhi Eric card, you can choose which card to take. When you take a card into your hand, you resolve the effect shown on the left side of the card. If you cannot fully resolve this effect or if you don't want to resolve the effect, you have to do a risk draw. When you do a risk draw, you reveal the top card of the deck and if it's an ally, simply put it back to the bottom of the deck. But if it's a Gamli Eric card, Gamli Eric moves two trees in clockwise direction. Then put the card at the bottom of the deck. No matter the result of the risk draw, you take the card into your hand. When you take an Elephal card from the future into your hand, you must choose another ally card from the future and put it on the bottom of the deck. It must be an ally card. You cannot choose a Gamli Eric card. If you take a Hulva card into your hand, you must damage a tree. Only empty trees can be damaged, so trees without allies, Vogtor or Gamli Eric. If there is no tree on the withered side, choose an empty tree and turn it to the withered side. But if there is already a tree on the withered side, you must remove it from the game, which means the forest gets smaller. Withered cards can be moved on and allies can be placed on them, as on any regular tree. If you take a Nisse card into your hand, you must move the badger to the next tree in clockwise direction, where there is a hidden ally. Then expose the ally. This is shown by turning the card sideways. Remember, if you cannot fully perform this action, you instead have to do a risk draw. Exposed allies work the same as hidden allies, with the only difference that Gamli Eric, when he moves on a tree with an ally, he ignores hidden allies. But if this is an exposed ally, the ally is discarded. When you take a toll into your hand, you must expose two allies in the forest. You can never expose an already exposed ally. And if there is not enough allies to expose, instead you need to do a risk draw. You could also expose a hidden ally where Gamli Eric is on, but remember as soon as Gamli Eric is on a tree with an exposed ally, the ally is discarded. When you take a Form Skifter card to your hand, you must move Gamli Eric to the next tree in clockwise direction. Remember that this discards exposed allies and remember that you lose the game when Gamli Eric and Vogtor are on the same tree. When you take a Gamli Eric card, and remember you have to take it if the leftmost card is a Gamli Eric card, then you also move the Gamli Eric pawn to the next tree in clockwise direction. Also, the Gamli Eric card has a special ability which says whenever a Gamli Eric card goes into your hand, you immediately take it and put it to the bottom of the deck. So actually, 
Gamli Air Raid cards will never stay in your hand. When you perform the action Vokta's Command Mission, you must discard one ally from your hand to trigger its ability on the right side of the card. This is the only way to trigger the ally's abilities. If you discard them in any other way, like from the forest or directly from the future, the ability is not triggered. When you discard Hulre, you can take any two cards from the future into your hand without applying the effects on their left side. You can also give any or all of these cards to other players. Also, remember that as soon as you take a Gamli Eric card in your hand, this right ability triggers, which puts the card on the bottom of the deck. When you discard an Elephant card, you draw the top four cards of the deck, and then you can choose any number of cards to place at the bottom of the deck in any order you want, and place the rest of the cards on top of the deck in any order you want. When you discard a Nisse card, you can look through the discard and choose two cards to put on the bottom of the deck in any order. These two cards cannot be Nisse cards and they have to be different. You can look through the discard pile anytime during the game. When you discard a Troll card, you can move Gamli Erik up to three spaces counterclockwise in the forest. He affects every tree he moves on or over, and you can decide to not move him at all. The Form Skifter is different. When you play the Form Skifter using the command mission action, you do not discard it, but you place him in the forest as with a position action. And this is the only ally that can be placed even if there are already other kinds of allies in the forest. But it does not work the other way around, meaning if there is only form skifters in the forest, you can only add more form skifters and not different kinds of allies. When you choose Vokter's Gambit action, you must damage a tree. Remember, only empty trees can be damaged. If there is already a withered one, it gets discarded and removed from the game. If not, you have to flip it to its withered side. But then this allows you to choose up to three cards from the future and put them under the deck in any order you want. Finally, Vokta's Wrath is the action that allows you to defeat minions. Each minion has a value, 2, 3 or 4, and this is the amount of allies you need to have at least in the forest to defeat the minion. In this case, with 4 allies, I could defeat any of those 6 minions, and I of course will take a high value minion. So the first step is you remove the minion from the game. The second step is you shuffle the deck, only the deck, you never shuffle the discard pile. And then you have a choice out of three options. The first option is run. You can move Vokter over ally cards to any ally card you want to. So I can move him here, but no further because there is no ally card. Then you discard all ally cards from the forest, even if there are more than you actually needed to defeat the minion. The second option is revenge. Again, you discard all allies from the forest, and then you can discard one Gamli Array card from the future to the discard pile. This is the only way to remove Gumli Airy cards from the game. The third option is Restore. You discard all allies from the forest 
and then you can heal one withered tree. The tree must be empty, so no pawn on it, and you simply flip it to its healthy side. As soon as you defeat the last minion, you win the game. To make the game easier, you can add more trees to the forest during setup, either withered or healthy. There are two additional tree cards in the game. To make the game harder, you can start with one or more withered trees or even with less trees than six. Also, the game becomes slightly harder when you add in expansions. There are two expansion modules already in the game, Lichtemann's Meddling and Rescue, and you can add either or both as you like. When you play with the Lichtemann's Meddling expansion, after setup, shuffle the six Lichtemann cards and randomly place one on each of the six minions. Place them on the confusing side, which is the side with the blue image on the top right corner. Also add the card Voctor's Conciliation to the Voctor cards. During the game you can only defeat minions without Lichtemann cards on them, so none at the start of the game. To remove Lichtemann cards, you can take the action Rally. For this, you take a card from your hand, which allows you to remove the Lichtemann card showing the same image as the card you use, in this case, this one. Remove it from the minion, flip it over. This is now a rallied Lichtemann. Then you put the card you used on the bottom of the deck. The card with the question mark can be removed by any ally. You cannot use the rally action if there is a minion without Lichtemann card. So to use this action again, I first have to defeat this minion. The second new action is the commit action and this has two options. The first option allows you to remove one rallied Lichtemann card from the game and reveal cards from the deck until you revealed one ally. You take the ally, put it on top of the deck and all other cards on the bottom of the deck. To use the second option, you need to remove two rallied Lichtemann cards from the game and then you reveal cards from the deck until you draw at least two allies and one Gamle Eric card. And then you discard the Gamle Eric card. You don't put it on the bottom of the deck. It's out of the game. And choose two of the allies you drew, put them on the top of your deck and put the remaining allies in any order you choose on the bottom of the deck. When you play with the rescue expansion, during setup, before you create the deck, remove one of each kind of allies and place them in a row on the table. And then create the deck as usual. Then randomize the five hostage tokens and place one on each of the set aside allies. Note that one of these tokens shows times two on it. Shuffle the seed tokens and place one on each minion face up. Also add the Voctor's Rescue card to the other Voctor cards. During the game, when you take Voctor's command, position or mission, you cannot use any ally of a kind that still has a hostage token on it. So I can use neither of these two because they still have hostage tokens on them. 
Note that you can still use any ally when you play with the leak demand expansion and use the rally action. To free these allies, you can take the Voctor's rescue action. When you take this action, you must damage a tree to remove one of the hostage tokens and then put the rescued ally on top of the deck. Note that for the times two hostage token, you need to damage a tree twice. In this case, meaning this is removed from the game and a healthy tree is flipped to its wither side. Each time you defeat a minion, take the C token and place it in the center of the forest. At the beginning of any player's turn, if there are two seeds of the same kind in the center of the forest, you can remove them from the game and return a removed tree back to the forest. You return the tree on its healthy side and it must be inserted in clockwise direction from Vogter and counterclockwise from Gamli Eric, meaning in any of these spaces. You cannot have more trees in the forest than you started the game with. And this is all you need to know to play Scoventure. Have fun with the game and see you next time. Bye.